is Damien Evans. Now tonight, President Uhuru Kenyatta has once again made a stinging criticism of the judiciary following its numerous hard-hitting rulings not favorable to the executive. The president cited the recent ruling on BBI by a five-judge bench of the High Court that declared BBI unconstitutional and the 2017 annulment of the presidential election results as examples where the judiciary was not sensitive to what he called the people's wishes. According to the head of state, the ruling on BBI had tested the limits of the constitution and that the burden of the rulings had not been factored in. We begin tonight with KTN senior political reporter, Jeff Kirui. From the nullification of a presidential election in 2017, to an attempt to stop the will of the people as expressed through the BBI, the judiciary has indeed tested our constitutional limits. On the 58th edition celebrating the independence of Kenya, the independence of judiciary is once again on trial. While I stand by the rule of law, and I will always obey the decisions of the courts, I am also compelled by my position to heed the sovereign and supreme voice of the people of Kenya. The president now taking on the judiciary following a ruling by the High Court that declared the BBI bill unconstitutional. The judiciary would have asked itself another question. Can Kenya truly be a democracy if the people are denied the opportunity to express their sovereign and supreme choice at the ballot box on the basis of elevating technicalities President Uhuru Kenyatta saying some decisions by the judiciary had subverted the will of the people and cited the BBI ruling as well as the 2017 presidential election. According to the president, the ruling had plunged the nation into heavy losses running into trillions of shillings. It is a fact that we were losing close to 1 billion shillings every working hour for the 123 days we held the 2017 election. The question the national conversation should therefore ask is who carried the burden of this choice? Was it the judiciary or the people? And perhaps taking a swipe at his deputy William Ruto and his allies who have continually questioned the rationale of amending the 2010 constitution at the time the country is battling the economic effects of COVID-19 pandemic. President Kenyatta says the opposition of BBI was premised on fear of change. They oppose the bill sometimes not because of its substance, which even its harshest critics concede is good, but because unlike our founding fathers, they cannot dare to imagine a better Kenya for all. Proponents of BBI have already appealed the ruling of the High Court annulling the initiative. And on Wednesday, a three-judge bench of the Court of Appeal is set to sit for the judges to give directions on whether they will hear the substantive appeal or applications for stay. The president also used the opportunity to spell out some of the gains his government had made. In the last eight years, my administration has doubled what the, the, colo the, the colonizers and the first three administrations did in 128 years. This is President Kenyatta's second last Madaraka Day celebration before his term comes to an end. Jeff Kirui KTN News. Let's stay in Kisumu. Several other leaders emphasize the need for unity among Kenyans. Deputy President William Ruto saying it